Cups. Thank you guys for being here. Um, who's, who's first time here? Victor, um, and I have been uh, involved with Mormon Cubs more seriously recently in the last month or so, but I've been coming uh, on a weekly basis over here, getting my free coffee, Seattle Strong, if you haven't gotten that yet, make sure you get some, it looks like you might have run down, oh there's a couple of cans left, but um, really enjoying the community, so excited to, to uh, really get a uh, really cool presentation going. So, we don't have a clicker this time, but uh, One Million Cups is here um, to help people get a clearer idea of what business that they want to present. Um, and so, if you haven't already, grab a coffee, download the app to check in. Um, there will be a good way to get to know the presenter a little more. Follow us on social media at One MC Seattle. Um, if you came here from Meetup, then you already know where that is. Um, and mark your calendar for we we do these meetups every Wednesday. So even if you can't make it, um, the the following week you'll always we're always here. Um, so what are we about? We'll we'll go through this quickly for those who already seen all this, but uh, we're here to share ideas, to really help uh, people get inspired by all the different ideas that we have in, uh, in people's journeys here, um, and to ask for help. This, I, I joined this community out of the, the sort of a, the authenticity of what other entrepreneurs are doing, and to be able to be open and ask for help, that was something I, I know can be really hard to do for a lot of us. Um, build a community and here to support each other whenever we need. Um, what, that is a little weird, but <laughs> what makes us different is that we're here to, for presentations um, and not for pitching, so this is not the place to ask for investor money or to um, to pitch anything, but to present and get a better idea of um, what you want to want to get out of your, your business or venture. Here we are connecting. We're not necessarily networking in the traditional form. We don't have name tags and whatnot. We're here to really develop relationships here um, and to this is a community by the community for the community, um, and of course, being inclusive. So, very open to every idea and every uh, venture here. We have 168 communities across the U.S. Uh, with 3,500 weekly attendees um, and 700 volunteer organizers. So, raise your hand if you are an organizer here at One MC. Um, you can reach out to any of these people whenever you have any questions about One MC. More than 8,000 entrepreneurs have shared their stories, including myself, uh, a couple times on this stage. Uh, and it's been really cool to even get more clarity in, in my own business too. Um, and also just present like your practice being in front of people. Uh, so special thanks to the collective, uh, this space here, this, this awesome venue. Um, they all, they are sponsoring some of our uh, hot coffee as well, along with uh, Seattle Strong. And if you haven't had a can of that, definitely do. I am addicted uh, every Wednesday. This is the only reason to come here. No. <laughs> uh, and these are our volunteers. Um, for one one MC. So again, if you have any questions about the community and um, what we're up to, or even if you're interested to volunteer to help um, really put on these things on a weekly basis, definitely reach out as well. So what can you expect today? Uh, this we're gonna hear a six-minute presentation from a fellow entrepreneur. 
Um, and after that, we'll have a 20 minute Q&A session. And uh, this is a place to give feedback on what, to, to really uh, help them develop you know, their presentation and kind of what they are, are uh, sharing and uh, kind of leave it up to the entrepreneur and how they want to guide that Q&A. But um, for the most part, it's going to be feedback on, on their idea and you can just ask them questions that you get curious about. And so this is probably not what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> uh, let's see here. <laughs> I don't. Have, I'm not a stand-up comedian, so I can't be entertaining you right now. But um, you're underestimating yourself. <laughs> no, quick. Uh, I guess I can talk about why I joined this community. Um, I was have been interested in a lot of. Um, really trying to find a space to connect with other entrepreneurs. I was I came from the corporate professional world and it was a lot of doing one thing in one path and so it was really cool to be able to find a community of people who are all want to do something great and live life with more intention and uh, live with more creativity. So this is something that I absolutely love, especially in being like open and vulnerable and saying like I don't really know what we're doing here, but this is a place for me to try things. Um, so if you haven't already, make sure to apply to present if you're if you're wanting to also get some practice or also trying to work out an idea. Um, you can also apply to present at one mc the one com slash Seattle, and you'll get a link there. We can talk about that later. But uh, how, how's everyone else doing? How are you guys feeling today? <laughs> you guys are yeah, getting some coffee, getting some, some energy in there. That's good. Yeah. Can, we have a bunch of new people today. Like, I, can everybody raise their hand that's never been to One Million Cups before, please? So we have like one, two, we have like five people. So what I'd love to do, since we're having technical difficulties, if you guys could come up and just introduce yourself, like your name, kind of what you're looking for here today, and we can keep it going quick so that we can get the presentation ready. You want to start, Seth? Uh, sure. Come on up. Oh, okay. oh, 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 Cool, all right, so without further ado, we'll introduce uh, Kevin for uh, Alpha Cortex. Uh, hey everyone, thanks for being here. I guess I'll you know, uh, introduce myself. Uh, and one thing, I will deviate a little bit from the standard uh, six minute format. It's more gonna be a 10 minute format, but everything else will be the same. And uh, I want to start off with a question, which is who here in this room has used a note-taking app or a knowledge base like Evernote, and then put in a note in one of these apps, and then fail to find it again in the later date. Okay, so I would say that's like the majority of people in this room. And I know that it's a problem that I have, and almost everybody that I know struggles with at a certain amount of time. Um, the problem with all these note-taking apps is that as you put more and more information inside them, the harder it is to get it back at a later point in time. Now, this is an issue that I've been thinking about for much of the last decade. And in that span of time, I've been prototyping different tools, and I've actually ended up in a system that completely solved this problem for me. So last year, I quit my job at Amazon to build a startup um, at Amazon's product, which is Alpha Cortex. Um, but before I begin, a little bit about me. My name's Kevin Eslin, and I'm a software developer. I worked at Amazon, AWS specifically, for five years, and I left at the end of 2018 to do my startup. Uh, before I started working on Alpha Cortex, I figured I should do some smaller projects first. So I started an independent AWS consulting firm, and I launched an online backup service, uh, kind of as warm-up steps to uh, work on Alpha Cortex. And, oh, 
to set the stage for why this problem is interesting to me and why I've been working on it, I'd like to read a quote by Van Bush, who is an early pioneer in computer science and information space. So he said in 1945, we are overwhelmed with information and we don't have the tools to properly index and filter through it. The development of these tools, which will give society access to and command over the inherited knowledge of the ages, should be the first objective of our scientists. Now, this was in 1945, and Manuel Bush is talking about having too much information. It is now 2020, 70 years later. We have been many orders of magnitude more information, but the tools we use to organize them have not changed. So if you think about how we organize information in our knowledge bases, it's basically tags, folders, and notebooks. And the problem with all these systems is that they're very ad hoc. If you want to maintain any sort of organizational scheme, that onus is completely on you. And over time, and as you add more notes, entropy sets up. This is a snapshot of my Evernote. And I have a couple thousand notes at this point, and over a hundred tags. And I tried pretty hard to keep it all organized. But it eventually evolved, and it's fallen into this mess. And nowadays, when I need to navigate my Evernote, what I do is I use that clunky search box. Um, and that's typically the case of how most people interact with their knowledge bases. Now, inside this search, I'm looking for uh, cups, and specifically this 1 million cups outline of the presentation I'm doing right now. Uh, but the problem is, I got a bunch of results for dumplings and cooking recipes. And that highlights one of the problems with search, is that it's not context aware. It doesn't understand the context of your search. Instead, it's based on simple keywords. And with keywords, the problem is you either get too many results, most of them being irrelevant, or you get no results at all. And when you don't have a result, you're never sure, is it because that note you're looking for doesn't exist, or you just haven't used the right keyword. And so, uh, this is why I built Alpha Cortex, which is a classification and search engine for your existing knowledge bases that aim to give you a better alternative than search. What we do, um, I call it a structured search approach, is we first start by creating a taxonomy for the data that you have. Now, a taxonomy is just a fancy way of saying uh, classification. We classify your data into uh, uh, scheme, uh, we describe how your data looks like and the relationship between the entities in your uh, particular thing. Uh, once you have that schema in place, when you're looking for a document, you're not searching by keywords through the body of the document. You're actually just searching through that taxonomy, which is kind of like traversing a table of contents to a whole book. This is a pretty high level overview, so I'm going to get into a little bit more detail in the couple of next slides. So the way that it works is first we start by organizing the data that you care about. Um, we do so using a hierarchical tree structure like the one you see here. So over here basically, um, if for example you're keeping track of food, you can divide food into meats, into vegetables, and into grains. Uh, the reason why we would want to do this instead of going for like a tag or folder approach is that taxonomy is an incredibly expensive. One of the most well-known taxonomies is the Dewey Decimal System, which is used by virtually every library in North America. And the Dewey Decimal System uses a very small number of concepts to categorize and classify basically everything that has ever been written and will ever be written. So once you've defined a taxonomy for your data, uh, what Alpha Cortex does is that it maps your existing notes in whatever knowledge base that you have, and it maps it onto that specific taxonomy that we just defined, or multiple taxonomies, depending on what data it is that you're tracking. Once everything is inside Alpha Cortex, you can look up your notes via something we call structured search. So this is different from regular search, where you search by keyword, where, and with keywords, you have an infinite list to talk about. With structured search, there are well-defined entry points into your data, and that's limited and also defined by the taxonomies that you create. Um, using this sort of structured search approach, 
nice thing is you always know what exactly it is that you have access to. And if it's not inside your knowledge base, then you can also be relatively certain that you actually don't have it instead of the idea that you're not using the right keyboard. And so, uh, as I'm talking about this, the question I often get asked is, like, this seems like a lot of effort. You know, I currently search through my stuff. It takes me a bit of time. But like, do I really want to go through the whole ideal of organizing my knowledge base? And so the reason that you want to do it, for certain professions, um, like in software development, we actually spend a significant portion of our time looking stuff up. Now, this is a comic it's by XACB. It's a, a pretty popular comic by piece, and it describes a Unix program that you use to set maps. It's a very common command. We use it a lot, but it is nobody actually knows how to use it without looking it up. And this is pretty pervasive in software, not just for this command, but for hundreds of little things you do with every single hour. And it actually does add up to a lot of time, and as well as taking you out of the context of whatever it is you're working on. But outside of referencing things, there are a lot of things that you can't search for. I like to call this the what is the best chess move question. Uh, there is no good answer for that question because it depends on context. It, dep it depends on your playing style, it depends on your opponent's playing style, it depends on the current position of the board. And so, for example, I do AWS consulting, and something, a question I might get asked by my client is what is the best configuration for my database? And so on this, I don't know if you can read it, but basically a question I get asked is, for Elasticsearch, which is a particular database that's text-oriented, um, what is the best configuration? Well, to answer that question, you can't just Google that. Instead, you know, it depends on what is the sort of data that you're processing. Because depending on that data, it determines what instance, so what kind of computer you need for your Elasticsearch. Um, depending on how big your file sizes are, if there are lots of little files or little big files, a lot of big files, it determines what the elastic block storage, which is a disk on the cloud, what kind of disk you need. And depending on how fast your customers need to access that data, AWS has a dozen different ways of connecting your database to your customer. And so depending on your latency versus price requirements, then you need to look up uh, what the different networking options are and what your network limitations are. Now, if you were to look this up in the official AWS docs, you end up going to 20 different sources. And it's a process that can take you up to an hour. And that is only if you know what you're looking for. With Alpha Cortex, uh, I can do this whole thing in a couple minutes. And it's actually what I do for my consulting. And uh, finally, the reason to use this sort of system is for understanding. Usually, I find that when I search for things, I have a question, I look it up, I spend a lot of time trying to find the answer. And even if I do find the answer, in a week, in a month, I end up looking again for the same thing. It feels like I'm stuck in Groundhog Day, never really an answer. With Alpha Cortex, when you do a lookup, you're actually traversing your taxonomy, which you can think of as your mental model for what that field looks like. If you actually find if you find it inside Alpha Cortex, then reinforces that pathway of where that particular concept belongs. But if you don't, then it's actually an opportunity to expand your taxonomy, to expand your mental model, and to expand your understanding so that the next time you can ask better questions. So this is a picture of the Gang Canyon. I didn't take it, but my parents took me here when I was little. And I remember being kind of shocked. Here was this magnificent monument in nature that records millions and millions of years of history. And it seemed like it would be something that would last forever. And now if you compare this to information that you put in your knowledge base, this is almost helplessness that one feels when you see something interesting and you write a note where you clip it into your epidote and you wonder, in a week, in a month, will I ever be able to find this piece of information again? And the answer isn't quite clear. With Alpha Cortex, what you put in your knowledge base, you will not lose. And there's something profound that happens when you have that confidence of being able to put something somewhere and know that it will show be there a month or a year from now. At that point, you can actually build on the knowledge that you have. You can leverage and build upon the knowledge of the ages. And so in closing, I would like to leave with a question. For the things that you guys care about, 
both personally and professionally. What are the things that you would like to understand better? What are the things you would like to know more about? And how can Alpha Cortex help? Thank you. Smarter now than I was ten minutes ago. Um, to what extent um, can Alpha Cortex be applied to other search options? Because when, when you're talking about the, the, the notes, that seems to me like a, a micro market. But what you kind of described was a, a much more capable search algorithm. Yeah, so right now, uh, Alpha Cortex is mainly focused on uh, textual information. Um, so it's like text with images, but the way that you traverse your taxonomy is text-based. Um, in the future, you can imagine that expanding to like images or photos or other ways that people think about like retrieving information. But currently, it's focused on text. Yes. So this is the experience that the sides where you actually. Yeah, so what happens is it seeks your existing knowledge base. So if you did it in Evernote, it duplicates it into Alpha Cortex and keeps it in sync. Uh, right now it's read only. So if you wanted to find your data, you would be able to find it in Alpha Cortex. Um, if you want to write, you would go back to Evernote. It's not the ideal experience, but that's something that's different because of the stage of my app right now. You can also add notes to Alpha Cortex if you're short in the field so that everything is one place. Uh, but most people have knowledge bases that they already use, so that's why we offer that to um, I have a question. Uh, I saw when you were presented the first time. Oh, yeah. Um, this is spectacular. Thank you. Like, I think the two minutes like, was necessary. <laughs> and, um, it was very clear and succinct. Um, like, super impressive. I didn't have any questions. I understood. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Theoretically, it's not out of the question. 
um, because you know we could just import it um, into alpha cortex, like import the content. Um, it's right now not what it's optimized for, but there's no reason why that. If that becomes like a use case that people care about, then it's something that gets important. Okay. Um, what What are your thoughts on the, the writing experience? <coughs> Say that again? On the actual writing experience. Of, yeah. Uh, there's a, some other note-taking apps like Ulysses and Bear that are, are pushing for premium writing experiences and not necessarily the organization side. Yeah. Uh, so on the writing experience, essentially that is the thing that we're actually not putting a lot of emphasis on. That's actually why we sync with your existing note-taking apps. Um, I think like if you look at the landscape of a lot of knowledge bases that have come with late, so think Airtable, think Notion. Like they do so Coda, they do a lot in the writing component. You can have uh, tables, you can you can have pictures, and it's essentially a mini database. But the problem is that none of these tools help you with finding information and getting what you need it. And so we're very focused on that one particular aspect. For writing, like we have the same writing experience as everything else, but it's not the thing that we're focused on. What do you currently integrate with? So we currently integrate uh, out of the box with uh, raw text files. So if you store your knowledge base like on a Hugo or a GitHub, then that is something that we give you a config, you specify some options, and then it's your call. Uh, we also have preliminary integrations with popular knowledge bases like that. Um, but yeah, the writing experience is actually whatever you use to author in those uh, sources. Yeah, so, um, what's your business model? How do you, uh, and I don't know how many of them Yeah, it's a great question, and it's actually something I'm exploring right now. Uh, there are multiple business models, and it really depends on what happens over the next few weeks. So, what, there's an individual subscription plan. So, if you are somebody that um, uses a knowledge base and you would like to use this, Alpha Cortex will be available to you right now. We're looking at like between two and four dollars a month. Um, I'm also piloting this with a couple of small businesses. So this is more like the influence, where it's an organizational enterprise play. And for that, it's basically a subscription model with Active Directory and more zeros after uh, for the monthly subscription. And then this one last thing I'm doing, which uh, is slated to go at the end of February, which is. For something like Alpha Cortex, it's I found that for most people, it's a pretty hard sell to think of like I need to organize my data before I can make use of it. Um, and, the, and so for most people, it's unless of course you can first demonstrate that value, it's hard to get people to like put in that upfront effort. And so what I'm working on right now is doing a public index of AWS documentation and putting that out there for free. And right now, that's being piloted with a couple of devs. But the idea is. AWS is a field that I work in, and I know it, everybody struggles with finding information in it. It's, it's a combination of public AWS docs, which are Creative Commons licensed, and my own notes on the matter. And the idea is for this to be like the one stop shop for looking up anything AWS. Um, it's kind of an example of, hey, here's what you could do with a taxonomy based system. And if people find value from that, then, you know, the, then they'll be more inclined to invest it on their own. And as far as like how that relates to your business model, um, you can imagine companies like AWS potentially like partnering with us and getting analytics or what out of it. I, I was almost thinking of something um, as a as an EP. So uh, having well, two things. So one is kind of as a um, way to connect um, all the so say you have all these apps that don't have your index and you want to search them easier, uh, that can be one business model. So the, the user, a customer can go onto the website and download this and use it as a survey extension and a and a hub for all the for all the different uh, search all the Those 
so Victor is because that's like right. Like I need a brand. I need brand. So how would Victor use it as a life coach? Like what what software service could he use to put his notes in as he's coaching so that he can use the alpha cortex kind of over this five to ten year span of getting his database together with all these people and then how could he search them? Yeah, um, I don't know if I should take this, or Victor, if you want to try taking this. <laughs> um, but I can try talking about, um, I use it in my consulting, and then you can you know, expand upon that. But for my consulting, um, I have two projects with a bunch of different clients throughout the year. And the way I structure each engagement is for a particular client, um, I, I basically have the log of every single meeting that we have. Um, I have a, a decision of, okay, here are the trainers that we made, and, like the handoff docs. Um, and then a lot of times what happens is they do a project for a client and then like nine months later they ask me to do a different thing but it's kind of built on top of the last thing. Then I can go back to the previous engagement and kind of see, okay, here were the meeting minutes, here is what I was asked to do, here's what I ended up accomplishing, here's what the client said. And so it's, it's a really quick way of like both refreshing myself on a project that I did in the past but also a really good way of just like setting up a new engagement because I know like, okay, like I'm starting a new gig now with Acme Corp. Uh, what I need is I need to gather the requirements, I need to get the stakeholders because like my taxonomy kind of defines like here's the information that I need. It's almost a checkoff list because I know that if I don't have it filled, then I'm missing certain requirements in my work with the client. And Victor, I don't know if there's something you want to add or like if this talk has Spark some ideas for you. Yeah, no, I think, I think in general, when dealing with, I mean, if I was consulting too, and so like, you have different, um, different clients, and sometimes the information can be siloed into each other. So you can like, connect the ideas and, oh, I've seen this problem before here. Um, and I can kind of pull in the information from other projects. Your use cases and what you could see yourself using something like this one. Um, 
currently onboarding early access customers, so please come talk to me.